Hello and welcome to the third of these four short videos about the sample OTBI dashboards and reports that I've posted on Customer Connect. My name is Caroline Gladwin and I work as a solution consultant in the Oracle UK HGM team. In this third video, we'll be having a look at updating some of the dashboard prompts and how they work across multiple subject areas. We'll also be looking at how some of the metrics are filtered and how to add some conditions to the time-based reports before finishing by taking a look at some case statements and the use of bins to display the data in the way that is required. So the first thing we're going to look at in this third video is how we can use prompts in different scenarios. So the first use case we're going to look at is a situation where all of our reports on the dashboard are built using the same subject area. But I want to update which fields are available to me within that dashboard prompt and have, have the reports reflect that. So the use case I'm going to use is my absence management summary page because all of these reports are built on the absence subject area. What I'd like to do is I'd like to have the option on the selections to be able to pick a particular manager and see which absences relate to that particular manager. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update first of all the dashboard prompt to give the end user that extra field and have it available for them to select from. So a little bit like we saw in the previous video, I'm going to go and edit the dashboard. You can see in the left hand column here is my absence prompt. So again, I'm going to come in and edit this. You'll remember that before what we were doing was updating the default absence types. This time we're actually going to add an extra field to the prompt. So I'm going to click on the plus sign above the list of fields and choose to include a new column prompt. The field I want to pick is from the worker folder, so let me open that up. Within that you can see you've got hundreds of different items to choose from, but the one I want to choose is the manager name, so I'll highlight that item and click on OK. It then asks me for some additional information, such as what operator I want to use in the condition, what the user is going to have the choice of selecting from, and also what the defaults need to be. I'm going to leave it as the standard setup, apart from the fact that I'm going to limit the values by all the prompts, which I talked about in the previous video. I'm going to click on OK, and you'll notice down here at the bottom of the screen that the manager name is now available in the prompt towards the bottom there. If I wanted to bring it up, I simply have to highlight it and use these arrows on the right hand side. But I'm happy to have it as the, as the final item, so I'm just going to click on Save so what I've done now is I've made available the manager name as a field for my end users to be able to select when wanting to filter the reports. The second part is that I need to update the condition on all of those reports to reflect the fact that that field might be selected. So if I go back to the catalogue, you'll remember that in the very first video, when I was looking at the structure of the content, that I talked about the fact that we had a subject area contents folder which included all of the conditions and filters that are available to the reports. You can see here that there's a workforce management absence real-time folder and within that is the filter that applies to all of the reports on the absence dashboard. So let me go and edit that and make that same change as I've just made to the dashboard prompt. So here we can see the fields that are currently in the prompt and all I need to do again is work open the worker folder scroll down and find the manager name, the same field that I just selected, and then double click on it and say that that value is prompted in the report. That then links this particular filter to the dashboard prompt and ensures that all of the reports will be updated when I make a selection from that particular field. So I've now done the two steps that I need to, to update the dashboard prompt and have all the reports recognize that. So let's go and have a look at that in action. If I come back and have a look at my absence dashboard, you'll notice now that the dashboard prompt on the left hand side has the manager name available to me. Now when I do the drop down list, you can see here all of the managers that are available in the different areas relating to the particular absence types I've currently got selected. So you can see an awful lot of names here available to me to choose. If I was to change the absence type and only have the Progress UK absence type selected, so I'll deselect the SICK and the SICK UK, 
what you'll find is not only will the dashboards update, but also the manager names now available to me will be a much shorter list because this reflects the ones that are available within Progress UK. And if I now, for example, just want to see the absence relating to Cassandra Dale's team, I can choose her as a selection and it will then update the information and just show the information for her particular team. So that's one very quick technique. In a situation where you have all of the reports linked to the same subject area, to be able to add an additional field to the dashboard prompt and have all the reports relating to it. The second use case we're going to look at is where, for example, on my performance tab here, I have reports that are based on different subject areas. But the items that I want to prompt those reports on are common across both subject areas. Now you may have noticed when you're building reports that you only have filters available to you that relate to the subject area that the report knows about. So if, for example, I go to the performance status metrics report, which is displayed up here on the top of the dashboard, because this report is based on the performance document status subject area, within that report, I can bring in the filter that is based on that particular subject area. So if I show you this filter definition, you can see that it has the eight columns that reflect the same columns that are in the dashboard prompt that are displayed to the end user. Now, as long as I create a prompt which has these same eight columns against each subject area that I want the reports to run against, then the Oracle BI platform is clever enough to know that business unit within performance document status is the same, for example, as business unit in the performance rating distribution subject area. And therefore, although I'm making my selections in the dashboard based on only one subject area, it will cascade those selections across all of the reports that are included in the page. So let me just explain and show you that in a little bit more detail. So here we were looking at the performance status metrics report with this particular filter. If I now go to the calibration report, which is displayed on that same dashboard page, but is based on a different subject area, when I come into this report and have a look at the criteria tab, then it has a different filter name on it. But when I go and view that filter, it has exactly the same eight common columns included in that filter. And these columns are the same as those ones in the dashboard prompt. So what that means is that this report will be updated each time you make a selection on the dashboard page. If I go back to the catalog, you'll see that actually the performance reports are based on a number of different subject areas. And that's why when we come back to the subject area contents folder, you can see a number of different filters around document status and rating distribution and rating real time and performance task status. And all of these have those same eight columns defined in them. So here, for example, is the filter on the performance task status. That's how we get a page such as this performance tabs one to work and reflect a single set of selections that the end user makes. So if, for example, I'm back in the dashboard as an end user and I want to just choose all of the performance documents to do with 2015, I make my selection here and it then passes that information across to all of the different reports that are available to be updated. So hopefully that explains how you can create a single dashboard page with reports from multiple subject areas, but all prompted by a single dashboard prompt using column, columns, common columns that all of the reports understand. So let's move on now to our third use case for prompts. And that's the situation where we want to have multiple reports on the same page. Those reports come from different subject areas, but they are no longer prompted on what we would call the standard columns. Instead, they want to be prompted on something that's specific to only one of those subject areas. So how can we cater for that? So the example I'm going to use for this particular scenario is the organization tab. This has reports based on the worker assignment subject area. 
but it also has reports based on the worker assignment event subject area. And the worker assignment event subject area doesn't know about all of the items that are included in this dashboard prompt on the left hand side. Now there are two ways round this particular scenario and I'm only going to show you one of these today. The other way is to actually create all of these reports again as cross subject area reports. And there's a great video on Customer Connect by Julian Challenger that explains how to do that. The technique I'm going to show you is to use a link report based on the person ID. So let me explain a bit more about how this works. If I go and open up my link report, it's called the Headcount Person ID report, all that this report does is based on the worker assignment folder is it brings back a list of person ID that match whatever the current selections are in the dashboard prompt. That is then used as a reference to limit the data that's returned in the reports that are based on the worker assignment event real time because every subject area knows about the person ID. So we can see here this report is just bringing me back a list of person ID. If I now go back and open up the lever summary report then you can see how it's all linked together. So the lever summary report is displayed down here on the dashboard and if I choose edit we'll see that on the criteria tab I no longer point to a standard condition linked to the dashboard page but instead I link to that person ID which in turn links to the dashboard page. So here we can see my workforce levers is bringing back any person that is equal to a person ID in that link report. And this technique can be used to in effect link reports from any subject area where the dashboard prompt is using some items which aren't included in all of the different subject areas. And that's where this example differs from the one that we looked at in performance where we were using common items across all of the different filters. So that ends a fairly detailed section on different approaches to using dashboard prompts. What we're going to move on to now is having a look at some different types of filtering that you can include in your reports. And one of the examples is right here in this Lever Summary report. So here we're starting to look at how we can filter time-based information. You could obviously just do simple filters based on the calendar year or the quarter, but often you have the requirement to make the reports a bit more flexible. And this is an example here where I'm looking for the date of all the events that are happening, but I'm only bringing back those ones which are at a date that's greater than exactly two years ago. And I'm using this timestamp add function to calculate the date two years ago. Now I'm not going to explain this in full detail today, but if you go to my OTBI hints and tips posting on Customer Connect, there is a full document explaining how to use the timestamp calculations not just for this type of report, but also for calculating things like people's age or people's lengths of service. So I'd recommend that you get familiar with this function, as it's a very valuable one to use in many different styles of reports. Now another technique that can be very useful is filtering metrics. By filtering a metric, you're not actually applying a condition to the whole report. You're only affecting that particular column of data. So let me show you an example to explain this. If I go back to the absence dashboard, then we can see across the top of the absence dashboard that we have these metrics here for leave duration by days and hours. So let's have a look at how those metrics are set up. If I edit the dashboard, I can open up those particular reports. Once I've opened the report, I can go to the Criteria tab. The metrics are, called, are here called Leave Duration Days and Leave Duration Hours. So if I go and have a look at the formulas behind these particular metrics, we can see an example of filtering a column within the report. So just to be clear, what this is doing is it's only bringing me back the leave duration, where the unit of measure of that leave duration, in my case, is days or the other item obviously looks for hours. Now how do we set this up? Well if I just delete that formula at the moment I can go through and show you how that's done. So if I pick the assignment absences and choose to include the leave duration 
that will give me the basic duration, but I only want to bring it back for those particular unit of measures. So the way that I do that is by utilising the unit of measure item which is in the assignment absence details folder. You can see it here down here at the bottom. If I want to filter my metric by that particular value, all I have to do is highlight it and click on the filter option and then identify and locate the item that I want to filter based on. So in my case it was unit of measure and I double click on that and then pick the value that I want to filter based on. So in my case it was days. When I click OK the BI platform builds the formula that I need for me and this is now going to only return the leave duration where the absence type is in days for its unit of measure. This kind of filtering can be used in a number of different reports and it does have the benefit that it doesn't filter the entire report so that different lines can be filtered in different ways. So I've mentioned a couple of times in the video so far about case statements and I wanted to just focus briefly on a couple of examples of where I've used case statements in this content. So if I navigate to the succession funnel report that we looked at a little bit earlier on, this is a good example of the use of a case statement. So if you remember, the report was showing me the succession pipeline and I mentioned that it was colour coded compared to a target. So the obvious question is where does the target come from? And what I've done within this report is I've defined a case statement to specify that target. So if I go back to the criteria tab and have a look at the candidate target and edit the formula, then what you can see here is that I've built up a case statement that basically looks at the candidate readiness and then specifies a number of candidates that I would expect to have for a position at that level of readiness. Obviously, you can make this more complex by building a more complex case statement, but this shows you the principle of how to use a case statement. You check for a particular value and then you put the result that you want to deliver into the report based on that particular value. So for one to two years readiness, I'm saying that I want four candidates. For three to four years, I'm saying I want five candidates. And where there's no readiness available, I want six candidates. The else at the end is in effect the bucket value that gets delivered if none of the other conditions are met. So that's a great example of a case statement. And we also so saw some earlier where we were looking at things like the skills reports in one of the earlier videos. So hopefully that example of using case statements has helped you understand where and how you might use these in the reports and dashboards that you'll be building for your organisations. That brings to an end this third video, which has looked in quite a lot of detail at how to set up your dashboard prompts and conditions for the different use cases that we talked about. So where we're able to define all of our reports on a single subject area and just link that into a single dashboard prompt, or where we have more complex situations where we're using multiple subject areas and we need to be able to link a number of reports together using the different techniques discussed. We then finished by having a quick look at filtering metrics, applying time-based conditions, and also looking at some case statements. So you're now ready to move on to the fourth video.